number of. <laughs> okay, I need I to make sure Commissioner Hansen actually asked that, that I would record this so he could uh, make sure that he got to see the presentation and everybody's opinions. Great, that's yes. fine. Did it just start or have you been recording all along? I just started it. Okay. I guess you'll have to uh, indicate to the commissioner that we've held uh, the re-election of the chair and vice chair and then introduced staff. Yes. Um, well, then we will go to our next item, which is the capital improvement plan update kickoff presentation. Eric, did you want to say anything and introduce yourself to the committee? He, this is his first meeting as well. I'm sorry. Yes, I apologize for that. Sure, no problem. My name's Eric Bodden. Um, I was approached uh, to uh, of my interest in, um, I guess, uh, in the world around us and what ACHD is doing, um, and to be a help where I can to the committee. So I'm here to learn and understand um, what's going on. So generally, when I'm in this role, I'm a uh, very quiet at first, uh, and hopefully as I get to know you guys more, we'll have uh, more to say or, or give opinions as I need to. Um, and um, I uh, live in Ada County, um, live uh, up uh, north of Star, and I work in uh, at Photronics, which is just past Micron. I've been there for 13 years, and I'm a regional quality manager. So. Uh, I, I work at all the different sites here. Uh, well, well, I, I manage all the quality departments in the three sites that Photronics has uh, in the US. So currently I just conned you guys in from Texas as I just had to come down here today. Oh, uh, well, you're not drawing. Uh, <laughs> I'm not drawing and it's 70 degrees too. So it's really nice. Um, and Eric, just to clarify, you're representing Ada County. I am. Very good. Yep. Uh, Stacy, is there anybody else that we need to introduce? Okay. No, we're good. Then uh, I guess we would, uh, Edison, Edison, uh, you want to take over, or Megan, it says both of you are on here. So I'm going to leave it up to you to determine who presents and who answers questions. Well, I have been nominated to present. So I'll get it started and then Edinson will jump in um, as we have questions that he would be better suited to answer. And Christy's here as well um, with some of the background and institutional knowledge on the Impact Fee program here at ACHD. So they will both join in and help out where they can. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We put together a little presentation here. Okay, looks like it's pulled up here. So we are going to be beginning, this is kind of our kickoff meeting for the Capital Improvement Plan and Impact Fee Ordinance 2024 update. We do have it in our current ordinance that we update the CAP every four years, and we are statutorily referred to it at least every five years. So we do try to keep on top of this and keep cycling through it to make sure that we're in accordance with the state statute. So that statute I just referenced, um, I've, we've listed here for you, Idaho Code Title 67, Chapter 82. That's where you can find the Development Impact Fee Act. And there are two components when we do this update which is the impact fee ordinance and then the capital improvement plan. So we've listed both of those here. And we use impact fees to ensure that adequate public facilities are available to serve new growth. And it's also a way for growth to pay their proportionate share of the cost of new public facilities. So growth is paying for growth. That's the goal of an impact. And then the capital improvement plan itself is used to establish what our current level of service is, because that's what we're gonna perpetuate into the future. We don't wanna decide to just do gold plated everything and make new people pay for it. That's not what we wanna do here. We wanna keep our current level of service 
and not have it diminish or be raised in the future um, through impact fee collections. To do that, we need to look at our growth projections and we need to look at our existing deficiencies and come up with an alternative way to correct those deficiencies because you also shouldn't use impact fees as an avenue to then make the new people pay for things that current residents haven't funded. And then we also look at our new construction for a 20 year horizon. And we're only looking at system improvements. We can't um, include all of our maintenance projects and other unqualifying projects. It's just system improvements that we include in the impact fee. So where you all fit into this, we are required to have an impact fee advisory group as part of the CIP and ordinance update. And you're all gracious enough to uh, act in that capacity for us. So we use the CICAC as that committee. There are some requirements for the makeup of the committee. Um, so we, as ACHD with the commission, we make sure that we stay in accordance with that. So some of the things that you are serving in an advisory capacity on this is to assist in adopting land use assumptions, review the CIP and propose any amendments, monitor and evaluate the implementation of the CIP, file periodic reports on the impact fees, which you need to do at least once per year, and then advise ACHD on the need to update a revised land use assumption, a new CIP, impact fee changes. So that's that's your role here is to have oversight and um, help us out, ask questions, and make sure that the documents that we will eventually adopt are the best we could do um, to get these fees right and fair and in, in place. So some of the specific things that we'll, we anticipate we'll be looking at as we do this update is um, looking at our service area. We currently have one countywide service area. Um, we know in the past there have been discussions about whether that still makes sense for the district or if we should look at um, different service areas so that we anticipate that'll be something we are dealing with as we do this update. And then we anticipate we're going to maintain the adopted planning thresholds, maintain the system improvement definition of just being arterial roads, so no collectors, and then evaluate transportation system needs and update projects based on compasses, demographics, and travel model, and account for current entitlements through 2022. And then we'll be looking at updating project costs and revenue projections. And our last bullet here, reviews following ACHD commission guidance, so a lot could change depending on um, direction from the commission as well. Did someone have a comment or? Okay, I heard a little bit of noise. I wasn't sure if it was just background noise. So here we've laid out just our tentative schedule. Um, I, we won't really go into detail on that because at this point it is just preliminary and a lot of things could change as um, we really dive into this, but it shows you some of our major um, tasks that we'll be doing. So the first task is to look at the 2020 to 2040 CIP. So that was the previous CIP and um, do a needs analysis for 25 to 45 roadway segment analysis. I won't read every single one to you, but it, it gives you kind of an idea of some of the major components that will be involved in this update. And then what are our next steps? We're gonna do a kickoff meeting with the ACHD commission that will be on March 8th. And we'll begin evaluating transportation system needs. We'll have updates to the commission at key milestones and decision points and get feedback and bring questions to you and get your feedback to share with the commission as well. 
And then at this point, we would anticipate we would adopt the new CIP and ordinance um, in the summer of 2024. And the impact fee statute requires that you have to wait at least 30 days before you start assessing a new fee. I think in our ordinance, we wait, I believe it's 60 days. So we typically give everyone a little bit more time to adjust to whatever the changes are. And if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to throw out there to make sure it's on our radar right from the beginning, we would love to hear it and happy to answer any questions we can. Uh, thank you, Megan. I assume that uh, really then you're just informing us of the process that we will be following, we and the commission. Um, yes. You don't have any, uh, any detailed uh, information, projections, or anything of that nature to present today. We don't right now, no. We just wanted to come and introduce ourselves and um, for new members on the CACAC, just kind of give a just broad overview of what this involves. Okay. Are there uh, questions of uh, committee members that uh, Megan might answer? Mike? Yes. It's Kent Brown. I have a question. Um, uh, you don't need to go back, uh, Megan, to the and thank you for doing that. But I have a question about the issue of impact fees and the use, uh, not being used on collectors. Remind me where we are on that right now. Are we only using them on arterials? Yes. Or, uh, so at one time, I know that we they did. In fact, I when we set up the impact fee program. Uh, they were, it could be used on wow. collectors. And at some point in this process, I will want us to have a discussion about that uh, since I'm responsible for representing Garden City by eliminating collectors from the use of impact fees, you pretty much eliminate Garden City uh, for being able to use impact fees because the two arterials that are in Garden City, those are Glenwood and uh, Chinden belong to the state. They're part of IPD system. And so what we wind up with by doing that is since you can't use them, then the uh, people that are in Garden City, they do pay impact fees, but there's no opportunity to use them within the city, if I understand the current rules. And so I, I would like to put at some point when we're discussing that particular item, I assume we will get an opportunity. I would like to have to discuss if anything, I'm not saying that I know for sure that something needs to be done about it, but it is an issue that has occurred to me. Thank you, Kent. Uh, I'm going to ask Christy Little, perhaps, can you give us the longer view background on this issue? I know it's been some time, but uh, help us out. Sure. Thanks, Mike. And hi, Kent. Um, it was about 2005 when the determined, prior to 2005, uh, collectors and arterials were both in the CIP and therefore impact fees could be used to fund system improvements on both classifications. Um, in about 2005, the policy changed and then the ordinances changed, which removed the collectors, but that enabled ACHD to uh, require improvements of curb gutter and sidewalk, so half street improvements on collectors. Um, so if we put collectors back into um, the, the CIP, then we can no longer exact those same improvements as development comes in. Um, so it's, it's an either or. Um, so that's, it's been like this, like I said, it's about 2005. Christy, can you clarify a little bit? I didn't quite understand when you said that uh, basically the collector roadway was removed, but curb, gutter, and sidewalk improvements on collectors would be included? So how it, how it was prior to 2005 was if you developed on a collector, you only had to construct sidewalk. How, okay. it, 
how it is 2005 to now um, is that you don't, um, that you have to improve the full street. Now the, um, we'll go into all of the information about the pros and cons of, of doing that. But um, certainly when you add in collectors, the, the impact fee amount goes up pretty fast. But um, right now, what we can't pay for in impact fees, we exact. So we exact improvements on local streets and on collector streets and on arterials, we exact sidewalk. Okay. Um, and I could comprehend, uh, you know, what you're saying because collector system, I don't know how it would equate um, in terms of uh, lane miles with arterials, but it would be substantial. It would be uh, there's there's a lot of collectors throughout the system. So, thanks okay. for that suggestion, Kent, and we'll yeah, thank you. We'll yeah. Add it to the list. Yes, thank you, Christy. I had I hadn't thought about that, but. Uh, and Mike's observation is correct. Uh, relatively speaking, since they don't do that there, obviously, since we don't have that many arterials in Garden City, we do have, relatively speaking, relative to the network, quite a few collectors that we do, and they are part of the development. So thank you for explaining that. Any other questions or comments uh, for Megan? in terms of this process presentation. This is Walter Steed. Could we get a copy of the schedule she had put up on the screen emailed to us just for reference purposes? And, and I know it might change, but could we just get a copy of that please? No problem. I'll get, I'll get the presentation sent to you. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I do have a question for the committee with with these meetings coming up um, you're going to be covering a lot of information just wanted to make sure that this format this virtual format works for everybody um, or if you would like I can certainly open up a room here at the district um, and we could do a hybrid or but I just want to want everybody in the committee to know that that we do have options and I want to make sure that we accommodate everybody Good, good observation, Stacy. Thank you. I personally, uh, and I certainly will uh, entertain your thoughts, but I would like to have more face to face, so that we can have the uh, the discussions a little bit more uh, directly. And um, other thoughts about that? I mean, it could be a hybrid, but uh, I think it would be helpful to have committee members in the same room uh, as much as possible. Comments. Walter Steve prefers in person. So I agree, Mike. Kent Brown here. I would uh, echo Mike. I prefer if we if we have meetings, but I can see uh, perhaps a hybrid of not every time meeting, but maybe a couple times during the process, or maybe maybe every second meeting or something, if we could do something like that, it might work fine. Stacy, a question about that uh, the hybrid term. Uh, were you saying that we could have mm -hmm. the, uh, the meeting face-to-face, -face, but others could join in, or uh, would that not work with the equipment set up? Oh, we could certainly have it in the auditorium where we can um, then also have a Zoom in so we could, so the person zooming in can see all the presentations. And just like with a public hearing, um, we have the equipment to have somebody talk and we'd be able to hear them just fine. Okay. So be, we could accommodate both, but to, to start having these meetings in person in the auditorium and then also having the Zoom capability. Uh, if there's no objection, I would. Uh request that we go forward with that format then for future meetings that uh, it be in uh, in person but uh, hybrid capability for those that are not able to attend any objections if not then uh, we will proceed that way um, 
I don't, I'm not hearing any other questions or comments for Megan about the process. Uh, if there are none, is there anything else that members of the committee would like to uh, bring up at the moment? If not, uh, I don't like long meetings. I would uh, accept the motion to adjourn. And with that simple motion, uh, we will adjourn. Peter? I move to adjourn. Great, thank you. Uh, unless there's any objection, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank right, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.